Hello wonderful person, this is Anton, and in today's video we're going to go across our solar system and possibly even some other planetary systems and try to discover planets, moons and other objects similar to Earth using what's known as Earth Similarity Index. Well, let's go and search for that one object that is very like our Earth and welcome to What The Math. So, Earth's similarity index is actually something that has been proposed based on uh, essentially various parameters on our Earth. And specifically here we're talking about things like radius, density, escape velocity, surface temperature. And all of these together usually give a planet or an object in space what's known as ESI. So, this is it right here. Now, in, in Universe Sandbox, for some unknown reason, Earth similarity index of Earth is 99.7%, or basically 0.997. So, in, in other words, it's losing like 0.3% um, of its own similarity due to something. I could never really figure out what it was. We can definitely try to figure it out later on in future videos, but for now, we just need to accept this as a fact. And the life, uh, likelihood of life here is 99.3%. Now, um, this is actually something that was proposed by uh, a person by the name of Schultz Makuk, uh, and I believe I totally mispronounced that, but this was uh, his proposition in the Journal of Astrobiology back in 2011. And so today we kind of use these, um, these particular indices for essentially assigning um, a number to a planet or a moon or a dwarf planet that will kind of determine how similar it is to Earth and how likely we might be able to find uh, life on it. There's actually other similar indices, and one of them, uh, for example, is uh, another index known as Mendes's ESI, and this is by Abel Mendes from University of Puerto Rico at Arequibo, and so they're all kind of very similar, but we're going to focus on the one that we have in the game, and so let's, let's go and look for objects that are similar to Earth, starting, of course, with the planets that are already out there, like, for example, Mercury. So we're going to go to Mercury, take a look at it, look under the materials, the go down and discover that its, its ESI is 64.6%. Likelihood of life is 0%. Now, in terms of um, escape velocity, density, radius, it's kind of similar to Earth, but the surface temperature here really kills it, making it quite uninhabitable. uninhabitable. Okay, so let's see if Venus has less. So, so far, Mercury is the closest. Venus has 43.2, this is once again due to temperature, so both of these planets are kind of out. We might as well go ahead and just remove them from the uh, catalog of search for Earth's likeliness by exploding them. We're going to just totally get rid of them, because we don't want to come back here again. So here's Earth, here's Venus. Gun. Okay, Mars. Mars is, or usually um, creates a lot of buzz in the news because people want to go here. Uh, Elon Musk, for example, has already made very thorough plans on how he plans to colonize Mars. And that's probably because it's very similar to Earth, but as you can see, it's only 68.2% similar. It's just a little bit more than Mercury. Its Earth similarity is actually not very high. And the likelihood of life here is also pretty low. And that's because Mars is actually a lot smaller than Earth. It's a lot... Um, a lot dramatically smaller, and if I were to compare Earth to Mars, if I were to basically just go here for a second and do a side-by-side -side comparison, you would see that uh, it's it's actually, it's tiny, it's very, very small, and that really kills that Earth similarity for us. So the surface gravity here is pretty low. So, goodbye Mars, with your 68%, you're not good enough. Let's keep going. Let's see uh, who else we can find. So next on the list is uh, Jupiter. And I think here actually we need to switch the simulation and go to the one that has all of the moons available to us because we want to take a look at some of the moons as well. So let's actually go to Jupiter, which is somewhere right there in the center. There it is. And slow down time just a little bit so we can actually point at it and just go through each of these objects individually by looking at, at their ESI. For Jupiter, it's only 23%. Okay, we're going to ignore smaller moons because these will probably not give us anything higher than that. Um, and we're going, to, we're going to take a look at bigger moons, starting with Europa. Europa also usually creates a lot of buzz in the news because we think there's life there underneath the ice. And here, the Earth similarity is only 24%. 
So it's actually very unearth like, mostly because it's basically a big ice bowl. Callisto, a little bit higher at 30%. Um, Io is the volcanic moon, 29%. And lastly, Ganymede is the biggest moon in our solar system, 28%. So none of the Jupiter's moons, unfortunately, provide enough Earth likeliness to us. So this kind of gives you an idea that uh, none of these moons will probably be very comfortable to live on. And this is usually due to size and the distance from the sun. Let's go to Saturn. And on Saturn, there's really only one major moon we want to take a look at. Maybe two, but probably just one. So let's let's start with Saturn itself. We're going to zoom into Saturn, which is somewhere right there in the center. And just take a look at its uh, Earth, Earth likeliness. And here it's actually lower, 16.3%. That's because it's even farther away from the sun. So the temperatures here are much lower. Um, Rhea, Dione, all under 10%. And the only one that might give us a chance to have any kind of um, Earth similarity here is going to be Titan. So here we go. This is probably the best example of Earth similarity. And even Titan is only 23.4%. Now, why is that? Titan actually does um, or is quite well known for a potential colony because it has very thick atmosphere here. But unfortunately, atmosphere actually doesn't uh, play out into the Earth similarity index. We don't really care about atmosphere as much as temperature. And in this case, even though it has Earth-like atmosphere in terms of at least pressure, the temperature here is way too cold. The density and size is way too small. And so because of that, it's Earth similarity, even though it's the highest in the system, is actually only 23.4%. However, if I were to place Titan a little bit closer to home, in other words, if I were to warm it up, let's, let's place Titan in the orbit of Earth. Let's see what happens then. So we're going to take, uh, we're going to take Titan and place it at a distance of uh, one astronomical unit. And you can see that suddenly the Earth similarity here is already 63.7%. The only thing lacking, of course, is the actual size and density. And so here, increasing density to about 5.5 will usually get it even closer to Earth similarity. And now if we actually increase the mass to like, I don't know, 70 moons, we'll suddenly have something that's a lot more Earth-similar. Earth so there there you go. That's that's kind of how you would make Titan more similar to Earth. Right now, though, it's not very, not very similar at all. Um, Uranus is going to be a very unlikely place to find anything similar to Earth. Most of its uh, moons are relatively small, like, for example, Oberon and um, Uriel, Miranda, Ariel, they're, they're all relatively small, so their Earth similarity is going to be under 10%, probably, or close to about 10%. And um, the actual planet itself is about 15.3% similar to Earth. And as you can see, none of these actually had any likelihood of life either. So, so far in our solar system, the likelihood for life is pretty low. Neptune is about 12.4, and the only moon we care about here is Triton. Triton is one of the biggest moons in the solar system as well, and the similarity to Earth is only 6%. And that's kind of pretty much it. We can also take a look at Pluto, of course, whose similarity to Earth is only about 8.3%. We can take a look at some of the other dwarf planets, and you'll see that none of them go beyond 10 However, maybe one object that could come closer is Ceres, and here the similarity is 27%. So, of all objects we've explored, well, there's only one that approaches Earth similarity to the point where it's actually kind of Earth-like, and that's Mercury. And really, the only thing that makes Mercury not similar to Earth is the fact that it's so hot. So, if we were to actually move Mercury to the outskirts of our solar system at a distance of approximately one astronomical unit. In this case, the similarity to Earth would actually jump to about 80% suddenly. And that's because suddenly the temperature is not as bad as it used to be. It's going to be over 80% even. So temperature here plays a pretty big role of making something similar to Earth. 
Now, as you can see, the likelihood of life is still zero, and that's because there's still no atmosphere, so that's not going to help us at all. So, uh, that's our solar system. Let's maybe explore some of the exoplanets as well that we have in Universe Sandbox, starting with the closest one to us, Proxima b. This is the Proxima Centauri red dwarf that's only about 4.2 light years away from us, and Pro Proxima b is quite similar. So here, the sudden similarity to Earth increased dramatically. It's already very close to what Mercury was at a distance um, of one astronomical unit. Basically, it's about 10 to 15 percent higher than uh, Mercury was. Life likelihood is still zero, but the similarity to Earth is already dramatically higher. And now comes the big one, TRAPPIST-1. This is the system discovered in 2017, and very, very exciting system because it has seven different choices for us here. I'm going to start with the one on the outskirts and go closer to uh, the start. This is also a red dwarf, um, and this one is quite far away at maybe about 30-ish uh, light years away from us. So here, the farthest planet, the coldest one, is 60.3%. The closer one is already 72.9%. The closest one is 77. The second closest is 87. The third closest, the one that actually right now gives us the most hope for potentially liquid water or maybe even life, is 91.7%. These are ridiculously Earth-like. TRAPPIST-1E, 85%. TRAPPIST-1F, 77%. And TRAPPIST-1G, 72%. So, in TRAPPIST-1 system, TRAPPIST-1D is actually, as of now, the most Earth-like object we've discovered. The life likelihood is still 0%, and that's because we don't really know if there's magnetosphere, we don't really know if there's uh, enough atmosphere, but the actual similarity to Earth due to density, due to uh, surface temperature, due to the actual uh, radius, escape velocity, is very, very Earth-like. If I were to place Earth right next to it, you would see that they're actually kind of very similar. Earth is a little bit bigger, but that's about it. And so that gives us a lot of hope for this TRAPPIST system, because maybe, just maybe, this is where we might be able to find extraterrestrial life. And anyway, that's all I wanted to show you in this video. I wanted to talk about the Earth Similarity Index and discover these Earth-like objects out there. Thank you so much for watching. Hopefully you enjoyed this video, and hopefully you will subscribe if you still haven't. Share this video with someone who enjoys watching space stuff, and I'll see you guys tomorrow. Come back tomorrow to learn something else. We're going to explore the star before we end this video. Space out. And as always, bye-bye.